Hello. Shuin here. I'm a carpenter working in Japan. The house that I was building in the video started frame construction in April, and it took seven months to build, but it's finally done. The owner allowed me to show you inside the house before they moved in, so I'd like to show you today. Now, let's start the compilation of season two. The first scene shows the frame construction. It was a beautiful day when we started framing in the middle of April. Although the preparation day and the first day were sunny, it started to rain hard the next day. So we postponed the schedule and built the roof the next day. It took three days to finish building the roof. Now that I've seen the video, I realize how dangerous frame construction is. After constructing the frame, I began insulating the outer wall. I used styrofoam for both the walls and the foundation. Because the styrofoam was thick, it was difficult to cut and install. Because the styrofoam sweats, the house is designed to circulate air both inside and outside. After the installation work, I installed the sash. There was a time when sliding doors were popular for a front door, but now standard doors have gained popularity again. The front door of this house has an electronic lock. That's very convenient. Next, I installed the Noki tent. The materials are solid wood siding boards. There are so many boards that I always have a hard time deciding on each one's position. I began work on the joinery inside the house at this point. I first installed the entrance style and then the floor joists so that I could install the floor. It seems a cat enjoyed walking on it. I used 30mm joistless floorboards for the floor. It took about a week to install the flooring on the first floor. It was hard to find good looking boards. I wish all boards were Muji, which doesn't have knots, but most were Joko, which has a few knots. I tried to install them so that they looked like Muji, which is one rank higher. I think installing the flooring and choosing a pair of boards took about the same amount of time.
Next is the style around the wood zone. I measured the area carefully for the tiling. The style shape was intricate, so it was difficult to work on. Next, I built the staircase. In the old days, I would build the staircase just before finishing the building. I didn't want to scratch and I didn't want any gaps to develop. But over time, I have started building it earlier and earlier in the build. That makes it easier to move between the first and second floors and safer. I always use pine wood for the staircase, as it's my favorite and worth the cost. A disadvantage of this material is that it can create gaps if it isn't completely dry. Also, it might crack in the future, so I applied as much glue as possible to prevent cracks. I then built the stair stairs above and below the winder stairs. After the winder stairs were installed in the middle, it was easy to build the front stair stairs. Compared to winder stairs, there are more steps, but I find the work easier to handle. I always use pine wood, but it was thicker than normal this time. Usually, the width is 45 mm, but this pine's width was 50 to 52 mm. So it looks luxurious, and it has delivered a very sturdy staircase. The next step is a skip floor, also known as a kowagari. It's a floor that serves as a ceiling. I use the same 30mm Japanese cypress joists floorboards that I used for the floor. I install them upside down. If you look at it from below, it's a ceiling. And if you look at it from above, it's a floor for a tatami mat. It's rare to install this kind of ceiling and floor. Next, I installed the ceiling on the second floor. I used solid cedar wood for the bedroom ceiling. The material is similar to the Loki 10. It is 12mm thick ceiling board. I always wonder where to place the boards in order to balance the colors. In the other area that was going to be plastered, I installed plasterboards.
The next step was to install the window frames throughout the house. The wood is a mix of sapwood and hardwood, and it is sawed in straight grain. I cut the frame so that the sash angle would be hidden. Since it was solid wood, balancing the colors was challenging. The door frame material is cedarwood, which is slightly thin. The length of each material was 105mm. The plasterer must have had a difficult time, because the wall is inside the frame. I built a pony wall at this stage, which I'm not very proficient at. Due to its shape, it was difficult to install the top rail while changing the angle. I'm not very proficient at installing this top rail, but it would have been better to install the pony wall earlier in order to avoid falls. It's better to finish the work I am not good at earlier. Next is the study. I built the desk with laminated Japanese ash in an L shape. Five laminated Japanese cypress shelf boards were also installed. The initial plan was to make it movable, but the owner plans to place a lot of books on the shelves. So I embedded and fixed five shelves on the wall to make it sturdier. It looks compact and easy to use. The space isn't one with which I'm familiar, though. Next is a walk-in closet. Several years ago, I thought the name was walk-in closet, meaning a closet that walks. I realized walk-in closet is correct. It is a luxurious closet, made entirely of cedar. Also, the boards have no knots. It doesn't look like a closet at first glance. Next was the entrance. It has been long said that the entrance is the place of the house. Inside the front door, there is a decorated shelf. An octagonal handrail is installed on the front. It is not attached to either the ceiling or the floor. It's a cool shape.
the storage space is also sufficient. I think it will be a stylish entrance after the fitting has been installed. Next is Kamoi in the Japanese style room. The five Kamoi were all different types, and their installation also differed. The material is cedar hardwood. While I sometimes use Japanese cypress, cedar hardwood makes the space feel warmer. For a Japanese style room, I prefer cedar hardwood for the Kamoi. Next was the Tokonoma. It is made of Japanese cypress, including the style and the floorboard. The floorboards were very thick, so I had a hard time joining them. I joined two boards using a joint called a skewer bolt, which uses bolts. I think the joinery worked out well. The materials were well dried, but I'm worried about whether it will dry further in the future and create gaps. But I'm sure that the joint itself won't create a gap. And this is the last work outside, Nuren. This is also made of all Japanese cypress. It is 900mm by 2700mm. This nure is a very simple shape. When viewed from the front, the front frame is placed right behind the pillars, and that gives it an elegant appearance.
I have shown you my carpentry work. It was completed two months ago. Thanks to the cooperation of the other artists, it has been finished beautifully. I hope the owner enjoys this home for a long time to come. I'd say this pillar is the memory of this house. It makes the house very durable, but I remember that it really got in the way during installation. There are tiles under the wood stove and a stone floor in front. It looks nice. I think this stove burns well. This house is slightly larger than normal and more luxurious. It's not easy to create a large space like this. Season 2 has come to an end. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.